Hey there, welcome to the 46th Easy JavaScript tutorial part of easyprogramming.net. I want to give you a brief introduction to what Ajax is. Ajax is a huge part of JavaScript and it's a huge part of making your user's experience much better. Uh, Ajax is everywhere and I'll give you a brief introduction to what Ajax is, what it isn't, and a few examples of uh, what you can do with Ajax and just to get you started. So what is Ajax? So AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Uh, although AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML, nowadays AJAX just means AJAX. Um, AJAX utilizes a built-in browser function called the XML HTTP request. Uh, you may have seen other tutorials uh, or even your browser network tab referring to something called the XHR. Uh, that's short for the XML HTTP request. Uh, this functionality uh, allows you to request data from a backend server and update the web page asynchronously, which means it'll do it without refreshing the page. Uh, you've probably entered form data in a, in, a, in a website before where the form just submitted without refreshing the page. It's, it saves a lot of time from having to reload, and it's just better user experience. Although Ajax is asynchronous, it can be made to work asynchronously, but it is not recommended because it will lag uh, the crap out of your browser. Although it's very common to use Ajax to transport XML data, it's often used to transport data in JSON format nowadays. Uh, I would recommend that you look at my tutorials where I cover JSON, what it is, how to use it, how to write it, uh, to get more information on why JSON is better than XML. The page, uh, when you're using Ajax, the page is updated dynamically by JavaScript without refreshing. Uh, this enhances user experience by decreasing the total wait time necessary to view updated content. So it all it all happens as you're looking at the page uh, without having to go to another page, without having to refresh, etc. So what isn't Ajax? So Ajax is not a programming language in itself, so don't get scared that you have to learn something else. Ajax is part of JavaScript. Uh, Ajax, uh, it allows you to utilize your browser and your JavaScript to enhance user experience, nothing more. Uh, Ajax is not a dishwashing liquid. Uh, well, it is, but... The, it's the wrong Ajax. Uh, I actually have some in my kitchen. So how does it work? So let's say you have your browser. Uh, there's an event that happens. So after that event happens, browser sends some kind of request uh, via an event, uh, such as a get user profile. Like somebody says, click on my profile or click on my profile picture, and it's supposed to load your name, your email, etc. So the Ajax event, the XML HTTP request, sends uh, an event to the server, the backend server, a script, whether you're using Python, PHP, Java, uh, anything else. It gets a request, it generates a response based on that request, and then it sends a response back to the browser. And the browser, the response is sent back uh, asynchronously without needing to refresh, uh, usually the format of JSON or XML. Uh, it can be text or even HTML. Uh, with HTML, it'll just treat it as text. Um, It'll just treat it as you know as it as you get it, uh, and then and then post it wherever uh, the AJAX wants you to post it in the browser. Uh, so it all happens asynchronously. Asynchronously, it all happens without uh, you needing to interfere, without a web page needing to interfere, etc. It's all seamless to the end user. So something to know about AJAX is that. Uh, cross-domain re requests are usually not allowed on browsers. Most modern browsers will block cross-domain requests. So, for example, if you're on Facebook.com, if you own Facebook.com and you want to request some data from Google.com, uh, your browser will not let you do that. So most AJAX requests, requests will need to be sent from the same domain, uh, unless you're doing some sort of uh, API uh, webhook call, call or something uh, where it bypasses this whole cross-domain request, uh, you will get blocked. So you can turn on cross-origin resource sharing, it's called course, uh, by using special plugins. It is not recommended because it is not very safe. Uh, you shouldn't use cores on your website. Uh, excuse me, you shouldn't use Ajax to send requests to other servers uh, on your website. Uh, first, it'll get blocked by your uh, your user's browser, so they won't be able to go forward, and uh, it'll just make you look bad. But of course, you can always use it for testing, uh, something that I do all the time. So how do you make an AJAX request? So the XML HTTP request in JavaScript is an object. So we'll go over this syntax later on when we're covering uh, how to actually write the code. Uh, so you'll start off with by 
creating a new XML HTTP request object uh, using the new keyword. So it's a new XHR object. Uh, the next thing you need to do is open the open the request. So you'll do xhr.open. Open is a method of the XML HTTP request. Uh, it takes three parameters. Uh, the first parameter is method. Uh, so you either type in post or get. The second parameter is the me, second argument is the URL. So uh, it would be you know whatever script on your server is executing uh, based on your XHR request. And then the third parameter is either true or false, which tells it uh, if it's true, that means it's asynchronous. If it's not, if it's false and it's not asynchronous, uh, it's synchronous, not recommended. And once you have that set up, you send the request. So you do xhr.send, which is a method of uh, XML HTTP request, and it sends the request to the server. Uh, these are the three things you need uh, to work with Ajax. That's all you need. It's pretty simple. Uh, there are other things that you would need to do. Uh, so now reading an Ajax request. So the ready state change is an event, like we've covered in the uh, event handlers and the event listener tutorials. Uh, it checks to see if the ready state of a property, uh, of, to see if the ready state property of the AJAX request has changed. And there are five uh, ready states. Uh, zero means request is not initialized. Uh, one means server connection established, request received, processing request, and four means request finished and response is ready. Uh, so when you're checking to see if uh, your AJAX call is ready and it's finished, you want to check for ready state of four. There's also a status that you can get the page status, the web page status. You've seen these before. There's 200, 403, 404, 500, etc. cetera. Uh, you want to make sure that you get a response of 200, mean, meaning that uh, an okay response has been received and that you're actually getting data. Whereas if you're getting forbidden, uh, you're obviously not seeing anything. So when re ready state is four and status is 200, the AJAX re results are ready to be processed by your script. And how do you read that? You read it with a property called uh, response text, which is part of XHR. So it holds the response sent back by the server, which you can parse, do math, etc., whatever you want with it. So let's take a look at some examples. So I'm going to show you uh, the example that I've created here today. Uh, and in the next tutorial, I'll show you how to actually write the code. So it's time to learn Ajax. Uh, I've already gone over this. And I have two buttons here. It says grab hello. It's going to grab a little hello text from a text file. And it's going to grab user. So if I click on grab hello, uh, it says hello world from easy programming. It's actually grabbing it from a text file. So it's located in a file called hello.txt and it's just a basic text file. No HTML, no JSON, no XML. Uh, so you can grab just plain old text and it says hello world from easy programming. If I click it again, it's grabbing it from the hello text. And if you open up your element inspector, and you go to the network tab, and if I click on hello, you can see that an XHR type request is sent uh, to through my script.js file on line 13 uh, to grab hello.txt. And if I hover over it, you can see the URL. So it's a, it's a local host, it's a local server. And if I click on grab user, it's actually gonna grab data from a JSON, which I'm parsing to give you a neater look. So name is Nasmus, developer Boston and Earth. So it's grabbing just everything. It's not uh, filtering anything. Uh, it's not searching for anything. So as you can see in the network tab of your element inspector, uh, another XHR request is sent on line 30 because it's a completely different re um, XML request, uh, excuse me, Ajax request. And it's looking for uh, at info.json. So if I pull that page over here, this is all there is in that file. It's just a little bit of XML. Uh, sorry, it's, a little, it's just a little bit of JSON. Uh, that's all there is. So you can have a, an array of JSON and you can parse it on your own. Uh, so these are just some examples of Ajax. If I refresh this, everything is reset. I'm I'm uh, preserving the log here so it stays. So if I grab hello, it says hello. I can, I can call it as many times as I want and it'll call it. If I grab user, it says it here. Uh, my, my script isn't the best. If I grab user again, it just appends it. So I'm just appending everything so I'm not replacing it like I am with uh, hello world. So if I grab user again, there you go. Yeah, that's a little bit of a bug. Uh, but anyway, come back for the next tutorial where I'll show you how to actually create these two buttons and create a quick uh, uh, about 30 lines of JavaScript and two Ajax requests to two different files uh, on the local server uh, and get started with Ajax. Uh, I will be using brackets. Uh, for my text editor because it does come with a built-in uh, live preview mode. A lot of I 
DEs also uh, allow this. Uh, if you want to set up a local environment such as um, XAMPP or WAMP or LAMP or whatever, uh, you can do so as well. Uh, the other thing you should know about Ajax is that you need a web server uh, in order to run it. You can't just do it on, uh, you can't just open up a file in your browser. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions about Ajax or anything I've covered so far, please ask in the comments below. Uh, be sure to check out easyprogramming.net for more tutorials. More tutorials will, will come. I plan on doing a couple more, a uh, few more, at least 52 that I have in mind. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.